The progression system in Grounded was completely revamped in the Hot and Hazy update. We now have the brain power system, the ability to upgrade our character stats and increase stack sizes, weapon upgrades, a new food system, getting the mint mace in the first few days is all but impossible, and the burrow quests are given out in a more sensible manner. Overall, it's a giant step in the right direction, and I'm happy to see more depth being added to the game. Obsidian and developers of Grounded have a long history with RPG games, including Fallout New Vegas, Pillars of Eternity and its sequel, The Outer Worlds and its upcoming sequel, among others. Adding the RPG mechanics of character and weapon upgrades were the most surprising inclusions in the Hot and Hazy update, and I look forward to seeing what else they have in store for us in the future. The devs have also been open about asking us for feedback on all changes and how we feel they can be improved. In this video, I'll be discussing all the aforementioned changes and how I think they can be modified to make progression and grounded even better. If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure to do so now so you never miss any future Grounded videos. Let's get started. The Brain Power system is great for new players. It should prevent you from getting stuck while progressing through the game. For example, in my first playthrough, I had no idea that Lilypad Wax existed or that I could chop the eelgrass. This prevented me from exploring the Koi Pond for hours. The Brain Power system alleviates this by unlocking the crafting recipe for Guild Tubes so that you know you need both in order to craft it. The only thing I would change with the Brain Power system is increasing the XP needed for every level. I know they adjusted the higher levels in the most recent hotfix, but every level needs adjusting. I was able to get to level 5 in about 5 in-game days, and then I unlocked all 12 levels before exploring the Trash Heap, Black Ant Hill, or Sandbox. I would increase each XP requirement by 10-15% to to make progression through it smoother. Other than that, it's a great addition to the game. Character upgrades via Milk Molars, as mentioned in the intro, were one of the two biggest surprises for me in the Hot and Hazy update. I love this new system as it gives us more choice in how we want to play the game. Right now we have the option to increase our max health and max stamina, reduce our hunger and thirst drain, and increase the number of mutations active. These are all great choices, and the only other stat that I think could be added for upgrade would be movement speed. Additionally, we can also increase stack sizes using Mega Milk Molars, which is nice, but I, and I think I speak for just about everyone that plays Grounded, would like to see more backpack slots. Even with the larger stack sizes, I often find myself running out of backpack space because there are so many different resources in the game, and we also have to carry food, drink, armor, weapons, and tools. I think adding a way to get more backpack slots while progressing through the game would resolve this issue. My idea is to allow us to purchase additional backpack slots from Burgle after collecting and returning Burgle chips. Each Burgle chip would unlock the option to purchase one backpack slot at a cost of 1,000 raw science. Currently, we have nine Burgle chips, and there is at least one more coming in the future, with the lab in the retaining wall not yet accessible. That would give us 10 additional backpack slots earned while progressing through the game. I think this is a fair and balanced way of adding more backpack slots, as it wouldn't make the game easier by just giving us 10 more by default, or allowing us to get them all at one time. The second big surprise in the Hot and Hazy update was the ability to upgrade weapons. Again, I love this new system as it adds progression to weapons instead of every weapon having one default level. Also, the choice to upgrade into four different paths after level 5 is great. My only gripe with this system is how the four upgrade resources are unlocked. Currently, we can unlock the Quartzite Glob used for the Mighty Upgrade path via the Black Ant Hill Burgle Chip. The Mighty and Spicy Globs are unlocked via the Mysterious Burgle Chip in the Sandbox Outpost. The Salty Glob is unlocked via the Picnic Burgle Chip on the Picnic Table. Basically, by the time you unlock all these upgrade resources and have enough raw science to purchase them, you will be finished with the current content in the game. I think a better way of unlocking them is to tie them to the Burgle Chips in order of when they will be useful. I would tie the Minty Glob to the Hedge Burgle Chip because the Minty Upgrade adds fresh to weapons. After completing the Koi Pond Lab and Hedge Lab, the next place to explore is usually the Haze, which contains infected insects as well as bombardier beetles and stink bugs that patrol the perimeter. The larger infected insects and the beetles and stink bugs are all weak to fresh. I would then tie the Spicy Glob to the Haze Lab Burgle Chip, because up next is the Trash Heap and Black Ant Hill, which are inhabited by Black Ants, and you can find Roly Polies in this area as well. Both types of Black Ants and the Roly Poly are weak to spicy attacks. I will leave the Salt Glob tied to the Picnic Table Burgle Chip, because both Ant Lines which are in the Sandbox and the Assistant Manager who can be found in the Black Ant Hill are weak to salty attacks. Last, I'd leave the Quartzite Glob tied to the Black Ant Hill Burgle Chip because it's a general use upgrade. Speaking of weapons, there are two pieces of information missing from the game right now for some of them. First is what type of damage every weapon produces, and second is how much damage they deal. Some weapons have a small icon showing their damage type in the UI, while others have nothing. 
I'd like to see every weapon with an icon in the UI and what the icon represents on the OS tab. I'd also like to see the damage and stun, if applicable, for arrows and explosives, as none of the items in these categories have those stats available. I also think the weapon progression system needs to be looked at. Making it harder to get the mint mace was a good decision, but there's also another step that could be taken to make every weapon in the game more useful. For example, right now there's really no reason to use many of the starter weapons outside of completing the tutorial. In the new playthrough I just started, I was able to get an ant club by the second or third day, and it's all used for the next 10 to 15 hours so far, other than a bow. I skipped the spiky sprig and didn't use any of the starter weapons other than the axe for cutting grass and dandelions. I could just use an upgraded ant club and insect bow until I get to tier 3 weapons and never touch any other weapon in the game. This makes about two thirds of the weapons useless. What I think would remedy this is adding tier 3 weapons for each damage type, and also require usage of each tier of weapon to be able to use the next. This could be accomplished by requiring us to unlock mutations for each type of weapon before using the next tier of weapon. For example, in order to use the Ant Club, you would first need to craft a spiky sprig and get 50 kills with it to unlock Barbarian Phase 1. This would trigger a message saying you have now acquired the skills to use even stronger clubs. Then you could craft an Ant Club if you have the crafting recipe and use it to kill 100 more insects to unlock Barbarian Phase 2. This would trigger a message saying you have improved your skills with clubs even more and can use even stronger clubs. This would allow you to use and craft Tier 3 clubs once you have the recipes for doing so. Using the Tier 3 club to get 200 more kills would unlock Barbarian Phase 3 and give the message you have mastered the use of clubs. If in the future one or more Tier 4 clubs is added, the message could be revised saying you have mastered the use of clubs and can now use the strongest clubs. Doing this for each type of weapon will require us to use just about every weapon in the game and would also provide a better sense of progression instead of rushing to get to the highest tier. One last thing is you would not be required to use the mutations in the process, so in this example you would not need to use Barbarian along the way, but you could if you wanted to. With the ability to upgrade weapons now in game, I fully expect armor upgrades to be coming next. It would make the most sense to use the existing globs to upgrade armor and to tie them to the same burgle chips as that would fit progression best. Speaking of armor, I think the game could use one new set of early game armor and some minor tweaks to the existing armor. First I would increase the defense on acorn armor from 1.5 to 2. Grub armor already has 1.5 defense and there are no armors with 2. I would then add a new larva armor with a defense of 2.5 and make it medium armor. This will be made using, of course, larva parts. Next, I would increase the defense for spider armor from 2.5 to 3. The reason for these changes is to make the early game more manageable, especially for new players. Trying to fight a wolf spider or ladybug with acorn armor is a recipe for disaster for new players. In medium mode, either can kill you in one or two attacks. This means the most effective way of fighting is to stand on a rock and chip away at their health with a bow. This takes forever and is just a cheesy way of fighting, but the only way until you get decent armor and can perfect block consistently. Adding larva armor would make the progression through the early game insects smoother. You would get acorn armor as soon as possible, to then get larva armor, to then get spider armor, and then ladybug armor. Right now the game has an inverted difficulty curve where it's really hard for the first few hours, then it's too easy later on. Honestly, once I get ladybug armor, even though it was nerfed, I feel like it's easier to stay alive than it is to die. In my new playthrough in medium mode, I died 3 times to ladybugs in the first 2 hours, but haven't died since in the next 10 to 15, while completing the hedge lab, haze lab, and picnic table. I'm sure the black anthill and sandbox will pose more of a threat, which is great, but the game should be easier at the start, gradually get more difficult, and then once you get the best gear it can become easier again. The food system was completely overhauled in the hot and hazy update. No longer can you live off of jerky in a canteen, you now have to cook meals in order to stave off hunger. I'm fine with the food system going in this direction because the game was way too easy before this update. I had a system set up to get more jerky than I could ever use, and a bunch of dew collectors so I never had to find water, juice, or soda. It made hunger and thirst an afterthought. The new system is much more balanced, but it could use some fine tuning. First and foremost, since there is an emphasis on meals, the oven needs to be obtainable much sooner. Right now you can't unlock it until after you get the Haze Lab Burgle Chip, which means you'll be halfway through the game before you can even cook your first meal. On top of this, there are cookbooks for the Burgle Chips found in the Oak Tree Lab, Koi Pond Lab, and Hedge Lab. There is no reason to buy them until you get the oven, which I found out the hard way. In my new playthrough I bought one of the cookbooks pretty early on, and then quickly realized I couldn't make the meals because I couldn't make an oven. I think the oven should be available for purchase immediately, just like the smithing station is, otherwise there shouldn't be cookbooks tied to the labs that you complete before the Haze Lab. Beyond that, I'd like to see three types of food instead of two. Currently, we have snacks and meals. 
Snacks fill up a small amount of hunger, and meals fill you all the way up. I think there should be snacks, big snacks, and meals. The snacks and meals will be unchanged. The big snacks will be granola bars and jerky. Snacks would fill 10% of your hunger as they do now. Big snacks would fill 50% of your hunger and keep you well fed for 4 minutes. Meals would fill 100% of your hunger and keep you well fed for 8, 12, 16, or 20 minutes as they do now. I'm fine with the jerky being nerfed as it was 2 OP prior to this update, but as it stands now it's basically unusable despite requiring the jerky rack and a fair amount of time to make. Earlier I mentioned that the burgle quests are now being given in a more sensible manner. This means you should not be getting the Find the Stuck in the Haze Lab Burgle Chip quest before the Find the Grave Robbery Burgle Chip quest. They also removed the Alchemist quest, which required analyzing different resources. The current quest types are Artificer quests, which involve crafting armor or weapons, Hunter quests, which require you to kill a certain number of a specific type of insect, Explorer quests, which require you to place trail markers at various points on the map, and Chip Sleuth quests, which require you to find and return the various Burgle Chips. The Artificer and Hunter quests are repeatable, and the Explorer and Chip Sleuth quests are one-time completions. I would like to see the Artificer quest removed. In our main save prior to the Hot and Hazy update that I play with my kids, we would have had entire chests filled with just Clover armor and all the other early game armors and weapons because of this quest type. Instead we will craft what it asks, then immediately trash it. I think a better quest type would be Gatherer quests. Now if you know me well, you know that I joke about fetch quests. I don't mind them when done right, but I despise them when done wrong, and I think they could work in Grounded. These quests will require you to gather a number of a specific resource. The resource will be vital to progressing at whatever stage you are in the game. For example, the first one could be to collect 13 clovers, because that's how many you need to craft a full set of clover armor, which you could use when you're just starting out. After that, it could be to collect 5 thistles so you can craft a spiky sprig, and then to collect 15 grub hides so you can craft grub armor and a canteen. This would continue to go through the next best armor types and weapons as you progress. I would alternate these quests with the hunter quests. The hunter quest would start with kill 10 aphids, then kill 10 weevils, then kill 10 law mites, then kill 10 worker ants, and so on in order of insect strength. Each insect would have three phases of this quest, with the third being repeatable. Phase 1 would be kill 5 or 10 depending on their strength, and will populate the new Insectopedia, which I'll discuss in a minute. Phase 2 would be kill 10 or 20 depending on their strength, and will populate more of the Insectopedia, and Phase 3 would be kill 15 or 30 and will populate the rest of the Insectopedia. Each phase would also reward raw science, with phase 2 being double phase 1 and phase 3 being double phase 2. The other two quests, which are not repeatable, would fill the second and third slots until they are complete and would flow logically. For example, the Red Anthill Explorer quest would appear when the Grave Robbery Burgle Chip quest appears because both require you to visit the Westerly Anthill. Once these are complete, the Hunter and Gatherer quest would fill these two spots, so you would have two of one and one of the other, or vice versa. I think this quest system would fit better and make regression smoother. Crafting something just to complete a quest, then immediately trashing it feels silly. Finding resources to help you figure out what to craft next feels much better. Hunting insects to learn more about them feels even better, as we'll discuss now. The Hot and Hazy update added strengths and weaknesses to insects and other creatures in Grounded. Unfortunately, none of this information is included in the game currently, nor is it discoverable unless you spend hours testing weapons for yourself like I did. This is tedious and time consuming, and most players aren't going to spend the time figuring all this out. They will really just use whatever they think is best, or watch a video on YouTube like the one I published a few days ago, which I'll have a link for down in the description as well as on the end card of this video. This is where the Insectopedia will come into play. I can't take credit for the name, more than one person mentioned it either during my live streams, in the comments here on YouTube, or on my Discord. The Insectopedia will be a new tab in the menu that is a journal which documents everything you need to know about every insect and creature in the game. The journal will be updated upon completing the hunter quest mentioned earlier. Phase 1 will reveal how much HP and what the sun threshold is for each insect. Phase 2 will reveal which damage type each insect is weak to and strong against. And Phase 3 will reveal which upgrade each insect is weak to and strong against. For example, killing 10 law mites for the first phase hunter quest would update your journal with their HP of 2 and their stun threshold of not applicable since they can't be stunned. Killing 20 more law mites for the phase 2 hunter quest would update the journal with the fact that they are weak to stabbing damage but strong against chopping damage. Killing 30 more Law Mites for the Phase 3 Hunter quest would update the journal with the information they have no weakness or strength for any upgrade type. This would allow us to discover this information by completing quests rather than through trial and error or just not knowing or just being told. Those are my thoughts on how the progression and grounding improved with the Hot and Hazy update and what I think could be done to make it even better. Let me know what you think about my ideas and if you have any of you want to share, post them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button and consider subscribing for more videos just like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.